A new study shows that Asian Americans still face racial discrimination in a bunch of different domains and arenas in their life. But a lot of debate in the comment section is saying, how bad is it? Yeah, I didn't know that y'all were so bent out of shape about being considered competent robot nerds. I, it ain't don't seem that bad to me. Yeah, well, you know, I, I must say, you know, it's much better than what was being said about us in the 1920s. But all right, everybody, seriously, we're going to talk about this because I think that this is a real conversation. How bad, how extreme is the racism against Asian Americans? I don't think anybody would disagree that we face some discrimination and racism and different individuals face it on different levels. Different extremities, different right. intensities. Everything is variable across yes. the community. Um, but there, of course, are larger macro narratives. We got to talk about this new study, Andrew. It is from the Pew Research Group. Reveals that Asian Americans continue to face prejudice with a majority feeling that their experiences with discrimination receive insufficient national attention. Mm. So the study isn't that it's as bad as maybe what other minority groups go through, but that even when it's brought up, it's completely dismissed. It's shot down. Nobody wants to talk about the Asian discrimination. Essentially, right. nobody cares regardless, but there's a lot of debate about, of course, what the intensity is. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Andrew, uh, real quick, something that is Asian American... One you thing, shouldn't discriminate against. Yeah, one thing people don't want to discriminate against is this brand new chili oil. You know what it is. Smala sauce shipping out right now. Very delicious. Goes on everything. The survey indicates that discrimination for many Asian Americans is multifaceted, encompassing experiences related to being treated as a foreigner, the burden of the model minority stereotype, and other day-to-day -day incidents based on their race or ethnicity. And oh. uh, yeah, they, they did survey, by the way, and a lot of Asians that were born in other countries. Mm. Uh, they by the way, this sample size is 7,000. So I don't want people to be like, what do you mean? I just Asian Americans that are like all born here. Right, These yeah. are American passport holders of Asian phenotype, but they right, could have been right. from Asia. Right. I think, uh, I guess, David, what are your initial thoughts on this before we get into the comment section and this whole discussion? Oh, man, I got so many. I think the first of all, the responses are going to be more interesting than the findings. But I think that, you know, for me, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the model minority myth myself. Uh, okay. Because I think that obviously uh, it's true for a segment of the population. It's really not true for a segment of the population. Sometimes and even people within the same family, the sister acts like a model minority, for example, and the brother is super not fitting in that archetype. So it's even dependent on individual, individual, just like the life choices you make. Right. So I think that that's like something that's like heavily overlooked when we're talking about these like macro stereotypes, even though I get it. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, is the study surprising? No, it's not surprising. Um, my overall thing, here's, here's what bothers me most about Asian discrimination. I think there's different types of discrimination. There's different levels. And when it comes to, I think the model minority stereotype did have a larger ripple effect than people might give it credit for. But in a way, it's not my main concern right now. I think, I think when Asians speak up about anti-Asian hate crimes that are violent and nothing said about it and there's no coverage and nobody wants to do anything. Pros prosecutors don't want to do anything. Yeah, no, everybody, law, everybody at work has yeah. nothing to say. The law doesn't want to do anything. I think that's the thing that at the top of my priority that pisses me off, right? And You're then, saying the dismissiveness. Yeah, kind of like, We're you not know, talking about intensity, yeah. but the it's almost like the intensity of yeah. the dismissiveness is right. almost noteworthy. Right, and dismissiveness is a common theme for Asians, let's be honest. Like, I think also... Uh, people of Chinese backgrounds all being seen as spies. That doesn't help a lot of Asians who are trying to climb up the corporate ladder or political ladder or whatever it is. You know, if you're a Chinese person and you want to make a change and get elected, yeah. then you're going to have all these other politicians eyeing you be like, oh, you're a CCP. You're in the bed with the CCP. You know, I don't know if they all talk like that. You know what it kind of <laughs> reminds me of, man? I remember growing up in high school, everybody knows that being smart is a good thing in life, right? But you can go be. to a high school where people so value being cool, so value being good at sports, being good with women, having or being a hot girl or a hot guy, that it's almost like, at least in that micro bubble, even though everybody knows being smart is cool, the smart people are derided and viewed as like just whack given the metrics of that high school. Yeah. And it feels like sometimes it's so weird because everybody knows that like the things that Asians contribute are good. Yeah, that a lot of Asians contribute. But sometimes people are just like, yeah, we need you, but y'all are whack. Shut up. Uh, if you do anything other than just like keeping the systems running. Right. And like if somebody slaps you and hits you, 
Man, we don't really care. Yeah, yeah. But it's probably because you guys are weak or something. Like, right. figure that out. Like, everybody dismisses it. And I think that that's the primary finding of the study that stands out to me. Right, right, it's not, right. It's not that people go through it. If you have a foreign name, I mean, to part of the study, it's like everybody, even like a, a, a Polish person, is going to get some portion yeah, of it. Yeah, everybody goes through something. Right. And I do think it is variable because at the end of the day, Andrew Wright, different Asians from different immigration waves, different countries of origins uh, by their social class, education class, even their appearance. Andrew, like you could be from the poorest country in Asia and the lowest social class. But if you happen to just be physically beautiful, your experience is even going to be different. Right. right so anyway, right. guys, we got to get into the comments section. Um, it's very complicated. Uh, these are interesting topics. This. Uh, so first, the first section, Andrew, I pulled it from the Asian American Reddit. So this is an internal Asian discussion. We're going to get into the Yahoo Boomer comments later. Somebody said, nothing has harmed the Asian community more than the model minority myth in modern times. Mm. They go on to say that it's because it pits Asians against other minorities and that uh, it ignores the plight of certain groups, specifically Southeast Asians that come over in very different situations. And this person was just like, man, we're just comparable to Jewish Americans where insofar as that the right political spectrum and left political spectrum don't like us, but for different reasons. Mm. Um, what do you think of this comment? Because I, I get it. This person is educated. They brought up some valid points that obviously not everybody in the Asian community, uh, American community is even aware of. But I disagree with the assertion that the model minority myth is the absolute worst thing that's happened in the past 20 years. Yeah, I just think like I guess that it's going to come down like even the way people view Asians is on an individual basis. If they grow, if a person grows up in Long Beach or in the Bay Area, they might have a different view on Asian. Cupertino, right? Than if they grow up in a certain area, right? For a non-Asian person viewing Asian. So to me, I think that stereotypes obviously still matter. You know, media still matters, but at the end of the day, it is who they meet in real life. And if they feel that... Asians still fit the model minority in their real life, then that's just because that's who they know. Right. And it really depends, like you said, on what segment, I guess, of a, of a highly variable population you just grew up in immediate fishbowl exposure to, right? Somebody said the reason why we hate it is because the model minority myth makes up only a very tiny percentage portion of Asian Americans. But other people came through and argued with them and saying, no, 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 I have the macro stats here. It actually makes up arguably the biggest slice of Asian Americans. Wait, but it, uh, now it depends on what you count as the model minority. Oh, what, Ivy League kids? Obviously, that's a, uh, that's a very tiny population. Right. What is the threshold, right? What right. is your standard? What does it mean to be a model minority? Does it mean that you just try not, that you what, try to get straight A's or you, try to, you at least try to get B's right. in school? Or does it mean that you just try to be law-abiding? It, does it just mean that, you know what I mean? Like... What does it fully mean to be a model minority in people's eyes? Somebody said in America, by, at, in 2023, literally probably being a model citizen just means you either get an education or focus on a skill. You don't commit any heavy crimes, including using or selling hard drugs, and you just don't have kids too early. Somebody was saying that that's the basic threshold nowadays based on like changing metrics, right? Because culture always changes, standards always change. And by those metrics, most Asians fit the model minority myth. Yes, a lot How of Asians... Based on these three things. Yeah, yes, yes. On but, these three things, a lot of Asians But interestingly that. enough, within the Asian American community, they're probably referring to Ivy League scholarship like Taiwanese kids who are like super brains, right? So it's amongst Asians, when you say model minority, they have a very particular image in mind. They're talking about like... Uh, time when he's American guy. right right goes at the to 10 like out a, of 10 level like goes a to founder a, bro or to a, a good college, you know, and then... On the just American side, they're just like, well, just be a model citizen, be a model citizen, be a model minority. It's these things, you know, just don't go to jail. Don't do bad things. Law by work hard. This Boom. guy said that I got sick of America and moved back to Asia. I'm so much happier here. People actually treat you like a human and not a 2D caricature of an immigrant because they can only fit you into the slots of what they developed when they were young. Wow. Like if they didn't know a cool Asian and a nerd Asian and a gangster Asian and a church Asian growing up, people don't develop like new Asian categories as they get older. He's talking about non-Asian people. Right, right, right. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would say so. Somebody said, um, also you at least get to see yourself in media instead of what white people think Asians should be. You know, moving back to Asia is really interesting, Andrew, because even when you move back as an Asian American to Asia, you're not gonna be living like a local. 
you may be able to ping with locals in a way that like a white person moving back to Asia doesn't, but you're also still going to be part of the expat community. Mm. So I think that that's a whole nother thing though. That's a whole nother video. Somebody said, I can't believe that mispronouncing a name is so, uh, got you so sensitive, man. Yeah, a lot of people can't pronounce certain names that they've never seen before. What's the big deal on that? I can't believe they even included that on the study. Yeah, it's a little bit of a soft thing, but I think it depends on obviously how they mispronounce it. If they, if you feel like they don't care about your name, but honestly, like some names are hard to pronounce. Somebody said, "What the stereotypes of being smart and law-abiding? Boo-hoo! Quit crying, Asians." And then somebody said, uh, I don't even think Asians are law abiding. They might not commit street crimes, but they skirt every health and tax regulation in the book. Oh, man. Hey, man. Listen, sometimes. That's more, I guess, more true yeah, than more yeah, true, the right? One. I'm saying it's true. I'm just saying, it, you know, there's some, something there. Somebody said, we all face some type of racial discrimination in some way or another. This will always exist in a country where that is hyper diverse between Asian, white, black, Hispanic. You know, I don't even know if you include Arab in there. Some people do, some people don't. Um, and somebody said, wait, whoa, 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 guys. You're not going to excuse it like that because at the end of the day, yes, all humans are tribal. All humans are racist. But it's about the racism and tribalism combi combined in an equation with power leverage. Mm. Um, how much do you think that people need to understand that, don't think about that, or willfully neglect that? What, that racism comes from, usually has to come from some type of power? Yeah, because it's, a, it's like a multiplication equation. Yeah, it's the I, initial I, I, tribalism it, versus uh, colorblindness, X power leverage, and that's what creates the actual brackets. Yeah, I think... Everybody has bias, so that's already like a given. Every you can be any color of a person and be biased against it's another animal. Color. It's just human. It's an animal, whatever. But I guess the structural racism obviously has to come from a, a some place, sort of place in the structure yes. or of a puppet yes, master yes. or a For sure. being at the top of the pyramid, right? Um, you know, that's a whole nother hundred videos. People literally build careers talking about this uh, sort of intersectionality. Um, Somebody said, well, you know, I've seen people beating up Asians and it sure ain't white truck drivers in flannels. So I don't know what you're saying. And then somebody else said, well, who was it that dropped the atomic bombs on Asians? Who was it that herded them up into cattle-like cages? What was the Chinese Exclusion Act or uh, Kung Flu or blah, 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 blah. Like mm. political, geopolitical narratives that are against Asians or various wars that were fought in Asia on Asia soil uh, between West or America. And then my, my response to this argument is like, I think Asians get picked on a lot, Andrew, but different people run different spheres. So when you're in the streets, that's a certain sphere. When you're in Wall Street, that's a certain sphere. Mm. When you're in the political war chessboard of, uh, you know, war hawks and geopolitics, that is another sphere. Mm. But I feel like for the most part, and I'm not saying, you know, because there, there was the whole thing where Japan went crazy on everybody, right? But I'm saying like, for the most part, Asians are usually on the getting picked, end, picked on end. Right. In many spheres. Right, right, right. Yeah, many circles that Asians, you know, I'm not saying all, by the way, guys. Um, somebody said, how is discriminating against Asians, discriminating against minorities, when you look at the global stats and Asians make up 60% of the world's population? Yeah, this is an interesting argument where people are like, well, look at all the Asians in the world. Even if you discriminate against them in America, they're not discriminated in a world sense because they're... Like Asians, if you would count Indians and uh, Chinese already count as like one third of the world themselves or Bro, one fourth. It's, it, yeah. It's like 40% almost. Yeah. So it's like, whoa, like I, I guess how can you discriminate against the largest population in the world? Is it possible? Well, but isn't then, it because we live in Western global hegemony? Yeah. So it's not, even though it's like you, Western European people make up like 8% of the world, they dominated the world for the last 300, 400 like, years. Like, you know, there's more like, Africans than there are white people in the world. Right, but you yeah, but but you can still obviously you can discriminate against anybody, right? In your context. So it's, it's about really, the power it's dynamic. It's just your context. It's about who runs the system and that determines the metrics of the ladder and everybody's put into the bottom of the ladder and they want to climb yeah. the ladder but the ladder narrows at the top. Um 
Somebody just said, man, stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason, man. It's just the way the brain categorizes things. And then someone was like, listen, guys, if Asians just went through a few microaggressions, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because I get it. We're like an Eastern people moving to the West. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about physical assaults, hiring decisions, and other things that damage someone's life permanently being completely ignored that nobody wants to talk about. That I agree. I agree with this comment. You know, microaggressions is something that you have to deal with on an individual basis. You got to become a stronger person. You need to be able to speak up about it. You need to be able to protect yourself but when it comes to getting hit violently not getting a job when you deserve it just because of your race those things are pretty serious yeah i definitely think that you know obviously not all because there's a variance but like th some asians could handle microaggressions better you know what i mean i don't really hand i don't really think the stinky lunch thing is that big of a deal because f what people that, think that's just also f, f other people's lunch man it's all about our lunch what we doing right as long as you packed a good fire version of whatever your culture is, is better. Right. You know, somebody said, uh, everyone is discriminating, getting discriminated against. I feel as a straight white male, I'm getting discriminated against because people have said I've had centuries of privilege. So now I'm getting discriminated against because if things go against me, I can't say it either because everybody throws it out the window by saying you have 300 years of dominance. Yeah. So he's, his racism is getting dismissed except we're Asians getting dismissed, so we're minorities never getting the actual fair spotlight. Right, but he's feeling he's, like what? He's getting punished for no, winning too much, he's, right? Th he's feeling like white guys ha are losing the spotlight and now almost hitting Asian level. But I'm like, but why are Asians at your level if we never had the privilege either? I agree that there is some in some way discrimination against certain white guys in certain spheres. Right now, I for the agree. Last, like, three years yeah, well, probably. people are like i don't want white guys we can't have any more white guys at the company but, we can't blah blah, blah. I, I get it i get that but you also there's a reason why but then why are what's the reason for asians not getting it and this is why you got to understand math okay so if you're up 50 points and then you're only up 20 points on a plus minus mathematical basis you're negative 30 so you yourself andrew you feel horrible about going back 30 points. Right, right, right. So it's almost like, but you're still nowhere near people who are at a way lower point, but because you cannot put yourself in other people's shoes and you have no context to understand it, all you see yourself is minus 30 right. because you're, you're only looking at it for your own selfish situation. Exactly. Right? And I guess that's a lot, how a lot of humans are unless you just have a lot of life experiences to see things from you know the whole spectrum, not just yourself, uh, your own, like I guess the own personal individual performance of your game board piece. Somebody said, I don't know a single person who let, dislikes Asian Americans. What are they whining about? And somebody said, ah, no, no, no. To be honest, I think Japanese are the only ones that everybody likes right now. Uh, is How do Koreans if they know them? But there's not that many Koreans. Yeah. Right, right, right. Somebody said, uh, well, you know, despite all this stuff, Asians still prosper and live long. And somebody said, listen, guys, this is not the point. The point is that they are not getting what they deserve relative to the, the output. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess, I don't know, man. That's like we said, everybody's like disagreeing about this and disagreeing about that. Somebody said, oh, did I mispronounce your name? Me so Saudi. It's a classic boomer joke. I'm not going to lie. I had a friend whose dad was from Montana and used to do that at, at the Chinese spot in our city when they were ordering Ching Dao's and stuff. I don't know, man. He was nice to me, but totally that was racism. That's why racism is so complicated. Somebody said... Well, Asians do the exact same thing to other races as well. Here goes their fake crying again to get some government programs or the bills passed. Ah. Um, Andrew, so many interesting discussions going on. Obviously, everybody, you know what's interesting is nobody denied that Asians go through it. Right. And that used to be 10 years ago. People would be like, what are you even talking about? You're just making it up. Now people are like, oh, you're not making it up, but... Other people are going through worse. Right, right, right. So I guess, uh, is that progress? Yeah. It's progress. Progress is slow, man. Uh, how much racism do people need to put up with in this crazy experiment of America where it's like, it's hyper diverse. And then there's like uh, these tribalism dynamics. And then it's like within Asians, not within Listen, Asians. Man, and then I'm just like, we got everybody trying to figure it out. Microaggressions. Asians got to get stronger for that. We got to just individually get stronger, get better coaching. The parents need to prepare people for that. Microaggressions. And I'm talking about little things at work, little quips, little side things, side comments from people. Um, you need to be able to handle that as a grown person. So what do you think about this sign that says, you can drink boba and be a good person, guys? That is a horrific sign. Like, I have great intentions, 
by that person by being at the protest, but I don't understand what that sign means. Right, sort of missing the point, right? I don't get it. Maybe I missed the point. So right. I don't understand that sign. But, yeah, I mean, just this, I mean, but I do think that's why, you know, certain elected officials are important because they can push for things. And You know what? I'll that. say this. I'll say this. I think that people who push for more government programs, more uh, public recognition of racism against Asians, that's good. But we still have to, we can't rely on that. We still have to analyze ourselves. What can we do? What can we do as a community? How do we come together? How, who are our leaders? How do we like build intern or internally to have more, I guess, what, self-determination power? Mm. Like we can't just be like, stop picking on us. Right, right, right. But everybody's like, well, you guys are the smallest and the weakest and sure seem like the most alien. So that's why we pick on you mm. and everybody else picks on you too. And then you go, stop it. But then shouldn't you become stronger so people can't just pick on you anymore? Let us know in the comments down below, everybody, uh, what you think about this. Um, you know, I don't think anybody's out there going to deny that Asians face some discrimination, whether it's from the justice system, whether it's from people on the street. But I guess at what level do you expect it at and what level should you live with it at? And then what level should you rise up and really fight for it? Because you got to fight for the extreme stuff. That's my opinion. Right, right, right. Yeah. The, I think the big structural things matter to me more than... Narratives. I think the model minority myth, I'm not saying it's there's not a lot of credence to it, but in terms of how much I think about it, I don't view it as structural and I don't view it as like, oh, you view me as a model minority, I'm gonna do something anti model minority because I'm not gonna let that dictate my behavior either yeah, way. Like maybe if you get viewed as a nerd by 10 out of 10 people at your place, your environment, you mean the small, small weenie dweeb, then you are either actually a dweeb and a nerd or you need to very much change your environment. Right. Change so. the fishbowl. Dude. I wish we could get into a more America is so variable depending on the fishbowl you grow up in and STEM is not you know, being a dweeb is good because all of a sudden you're super good at all the equations that need to get crunched. And then in another world, it's like sports. It's the worst thing ever. And nobody wants that dweeb near their team, not even as the team manager. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. This discussion is not over. It's going to keep going. But uh, like I said, I think sometimes the reactions are even more telling or more revealing than the actual study itself. Keep it civil. We like the debate. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.